Meet Nuclear Option, a near-future combat flight simulator currently free to play on Steam during its alpha testing phase. Having bought into several early access projects like Fractured Space and Dragon the Game, I was even more interested when I saw that this game is not for sale, but you can request access for free. The download is compact and was ready on my 100 megabit connection in about five minutes. It loads fast and has a simple menu system that will definitely evolve as the game develops. The only major issue I encountered happened when I tried to configure my flight sticks. For reasons I couldn't quite figure out, my HOTAS inputs were not registering correctly in the game. The aircraft were completely uncontrollable in free flight, and a good chunk of the buttons were being ignored. I am familiar with this problem from playing Elite Dangerous. That game routes joystick inputs through the Microsoft controller subsystem. It's a quick and easy way to program games for use with basic flight sticks, but can only read something like 30 inputs per device, just enough to accommodate an Xbox Elite controller. I use a Verpal flight stick and throttle with over 100 buttons in total. Verpal has input virtualization, that should work around this issue, but for whatever reason, that solution was not being read correctly by the game. These issues mean that, for the moment, the best way to control the aircraft in nuclear option is by keyboard and mouse, or an Xbox controller, each one of which have pre-configured profiles ready to go without any fussing around. Until the key mapping system gets another development pass, this is the quickest way to get in and have fun. The control scheme takes some trial and error, but I was able to pick it up after a few hours. The learning curve can be initially steep, but the game rewards experimentation very well, so even in failure, I never felt discouraged. Once you start racking up NPC kills, the game starts to feel like a proper playable simulator. Being in alpha, there's no campaign to be concerned with, and part of me doubts this game will actually need one but it would be an awesome way to get people involved in learning the different controls and tactics affiliated with each of the game's aircraft. Here's hoping we get there eventually. The game presents a series of missions available under a menu by the same name. These scenarios are single-player, local encounters that work without an internet connection. Multiplayer options are also available, though I have not yet had time to evaluate that system being concerned mostly with mastering the individual aircraft against AI before stepping up into playing against real people. By far, my favorite mission was Total War. This large-scale scenario involves several phases of attack that culminate in an assault on the opposing faction's largest airstrip. This mode is formulated like a long multiplayer match. It takes some time to fly and complete. There is a strategic element to this game that involves relatively long flight times, a good loadout selection, and support from teammates to be the most effective. The Alpha economy is based on proficiency. To get more powerful aircraft, you need to make kills. There are an array of structures, air, and ground vehicles, with each having a points value. Get enough points to reach rank 2, and unlock the next aircraft in the lineup. From the start, only the CI-22 Cricket is available. This aircraft appears to take inspiration from the AT-802 Skywarden, a real-world weaponized crop duster used by special forces. The Cricket is the smallest and slowest of the current aircraft, but is also the most maneuverable. While it can be fitted for air combat, this little monster is made for attacking ground targets. Its tight handling and slow speed make the cricket ideal for low flying, slipping in and out of canyons, or hiding along mountainsides. It snaps to a line and holds it like a rail car, making it easy to pop up over a ridge, fire a salvo, and then dive back down to avoid return fire. The TA-30 Compass is unlocked at rank 2. This jet trainer functions as a multi-role fighter. The compass is much faster than the cricket, and carries more defensive flares, 
making it more survivable in the open sky and able to reach distant targets easier. It lacks the tight maneuvering power of the Cricket, so it's a poor close escort for ground convoys, but can still provide balanced support with its more flexible payload options. The next step up is the FS-12 Revoker, available at rank 3. This is a hard interceptor that carries a healthy payload. Currently the only aircraft with an afterburner, the Revoker is a supersonic jet that can outrun every other option in the game. It hits like a sack of wet bricks, handles like a bag of squirrels, and drinks fuel like a fish with the burner on full. It's a terror in the open sky that pairs fast attack with long standoff distances. Though its single engine is quite fragile and ground attack options are more limited. The final aircraft in the lineup is the SFB-81 Darkreach. Modeled after the B-2 Spirit, this smaller, stealth-focused, nuclear-armed bomber is fast, but not enough to avoid a compass or revoker. It carries a ridiculous payload with long engagement distances. The Darkreach can wipe out any ground target in the game by way of sheer saturation attack but offers no effective air-to-air -air solution, making it vulnerable when alone, though sturdy compared to the other aircraft on offer. Nuclear Option puts a lot of effort into its explosive simulations. Nuclear warheads deployed by the Darkreach showcase this tech in dramatic fashion, but the smaller ordnance options use the same system. Shockwave propagation and impulse are factors when flying, and are tied in with damage modeling get too close to an explosion, and the concussive force will rip your wings off. Damage modeling is based around modules, much like War Thunder, so the aircraft models will always break along these blocks, but there are a lot of them on each aircraft, so when they come apart the effect feels very satisfying. Since all of these modules react to aerodynamic forces, losing part of the aircraft changes its handling and can disable key systems. It's possible to be thrown into spins or spirals that cause further damage and even disintegration. At one point, I caught myself watching NPCs duke it out just to see how the different models take damage and break apart. It reminds me of building LEGO spaceships as a kid and then inevitably throwing them against a wall or the floor just to see how they will shatter so that I can put them together and try again. Nuclear Option isn't permanently free to play. At some point, this game will leave Alpha and everyone will be expected to buy in. It's not a fundamental industry mover, but it is a competent prototype built by a small team. I have logged about 12 hours as I write this, and the game has not crashed a single time. Nor have any game-breaking bugs manifested in offline play. Everything that is deployed in the game is working great, making it one of the best alpha level experiences that I've had in a long time. I highly recommend this for fans of simulator games. These guys deserve success, and they need more publicity than they are getting for what they have built. Comment the weapon or vehicle you want to know more about if you want to see me make tutorials and overviews for each vehicle and weapon, and I'll be sure to take note. My total audience is small, so the comments I receive will carry more weight than on larger channels. Also, consider sharing this around, especially if you end up downloading the game, as you probably know someone who would also enjoy playing it. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.